Yeah, take it. Careful not to make it. Yep. Yeah, you're skinnier than you. Mm. You're skinnier. Panda, come okay, on, see. inside, Panda. She's going to have sex out there. Yeah. Hey guys, so let's take out Harry come with on. Jade Good Lotus girl. again in a very interesting environment, Jade. Yeah. Where are we? Where are we? We're inside a tree, which mm -hmm. is kind of like a womb. And I thought this would be a really good place to talk about childbirth and the magic of childbirth. And I guess the first thing I want to say about it is, you know, there's like a million and one books you can read about childbirth and it's telling every contradictory thing you could possibly imagine. And probably if you're pregnant or you've been pregnant, one of the first things that anyone is going to have told you is how horrific and awful and terrible and painful birth is. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say is it doesn't have to be that way. And the second thing is all the knowledge about giving birth is inside our bodies. We don't need to get it from books. Obviously, books can be helpful. The right books can be helpful. Don't get me wrong. But... It really is about trusting in ourselves and having like a good birth experience is actually about just basically like relaxing and trusting in ourselves. How did you so, get, how did your birth experience go to share the audience? Well, my pregnancy was pretty much my whole last year at university, I was pregnant and I was vomiting the entire pregnancy, which um, is a bit of an unpleasant experience, but then they do say it makes your child more healthy if you vomit a lot and my child is very healthy. so. Um, you know, but because I was at university, I didn't have an awful lot of time to go to like mummy yoga. I didn't have much money either, you know, and um, I'd planned a home birth, you know, I very much like avoided everything like scans because I just felt like I wanted to be really kind of natural and also keep it as a very kind of sacred personal experience without too much kind of interference from doctors and so on. You know, so I did get talked into a kind of like last minute scan in the last couple of weeks of the birth, you know, um, but um, but basically, um, yeah, I didn't do too much, you know. So um, myself and my partner, we were really um, just, we were both like just, we were just feeling like in tune with ourselves and just very, very relaxed about everything without having done an awful lot of kind of homework about it. And like you, I said, you could say I had a bit of a bad experience with all the vomiting, you know, but... Um, when it came to the to the birth you know it was a very very magical experience so what happened was um i i was i was just finished my university all my exams were finished and then basically like the next day everything we were kind of ready so we went on this really long walk down the canal and we ended up just magically you know so much kind of serendipity first of all we bumped into this woman who just had this baby like two days before on a boat and her her husband was speaking to my partner for a really long time and I think finally my partner got his head around sort of what would happen with childbirth and everything you know and then we got dragged into some Sikh temple as well we were walking along and these Sikhs saw me they saw I was pregnant they kind of dragged me inside plied me with this curry which was very very powerful curry and apparently mm -hmm. spicy can bring on the whole labor you know went home went to bed and the next morning we woke up and we woke up and it was like it was like you know being on the most amazing amazing drugs you can ever imagine and just in the morning the sun coming up it was june it was just a beautiful day it was absolutely absolutely gorgeous and then um um we just we were both it was like our whole bodies were buzzing and it was like we both knew that she was going to be born on that day you know but again we were feeling really calm about it so i rung my doula and i said oh the baby's going to be born today and she said oh really do i need to come down and i said just take your time just come you know in your own time it's all i just had such such a sense inside myself that everything was going to work out you know perfectly so we've gone to visit some friends a few miles down the road we were eating some food hanging out a bit you know and then what i started feeling was more or less like the kind of cramps you get with your period so they came a little bit and went came a little bit went you know it wasn't something that was like excruciating it wasn't even like a bad period cramp but it was a kind of like a sensation you know and then it started getting a little bit more intense and also i started feeling a little bit sort of like spun out because i was the one who dro drove down i said to my partner oh, we better drive back home because i didn't want to be you know driving in a complete state you know later later on so we drove home and it was so amazing because as we walked towards the door my doula had just arrived at exactly the same time that we got back so we were like wow 
that's amazing you know and we went back we got back into the house and in the house it just everything for me started getting like very very surreal you know so a bit like you could say like a kind of a mushroom trip but it wasn't really like anything like any drug that one could possibly physically take you know and at that time I didn't even understand the whole thing about like how the brain is producing DMT during birth you know but it would like start going in these cycles of like pain relax pain relax like these real like cycles the body was going through and it was like I was really in an altered state of consciousness but my partner was there he was so calm the doula was there you know and then at some point I then said to the doula oh can you get the pool out here yeah. now I have no idea what an observer looking at me would have seen yet yeah. it was all quite intense for me but she seemed to think I was hardly even started labor you know but I asked for the pool, so she got the pool out, and I was expecting this sort of 24 hours of labor or something like that, because this is what most of my friends were going through. So there I was, like, in the pool, and it was getting really more and more intense for me, but I guess the intent, the intenseness was going on internally, because then I said to her, I think you should call the midwife, and she was saying to me, I don't think you're in labor yet, you know. And then suddenly something happened and the whole, like, my whole consciousness just changed and everything seemed really, really different. And basically then I started getting these feelings of, it was actually the, the pushing muscles were just activating on their own down below. But I didn't really know, like, what was going on. But then I really said to the doula, phone the midwife, right? So then I was on the phone to the midwife. I had one of these old kind of Nokia phones that you had back in those days. And I ended up sort of dropping the phone and the phone like smashed everywhere. But she got the message and I think she was in the house within 15 minutes, you know, because it was like, obviously it was planned, but it wasn't that planned. So we had the dogs there in the room with us. We had the doula. It was all like, you know, happening in the pool. And then the doula says, OK, really, you need to start pushing. So I'm like pushing and I'm looking down and this balloon is coming out of my vagina. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> And what actually had happened was my bag of, of amniotic fluid was still whole. It hadn't actually popped yet. So it was kind of coming out, coming out. It was like really weird, actually, yeah. And um, she was amazed because it's really rare to actually have the bag still be whole at this point. And apparently it means you've been really healthy during the pro pregnancy and not been eating too much sugar and stuff. But then eventually the bag kind of popped. And then the baby's head was coming out. And I didn't realize, you know, it's do doing a lot of out, in, out, in, out, in, little by little, you know. And then at some point she said to me, you know, maybe that was going on for about an hour. And then she got me out of the pool because she said the heart rate of the baby was dropping, you know. And it's all very like, I mean, I was just not in a bad way, but I didn't know what was going on. Like it, for, in my mind, I was like a lioness and I was doing this kind of like roaring sound and it was just... It was incredible, you know, and then they got me out. Well, I, I actually stood up and walked out of the pool, which the do, the midwife was quite amazed with. And they put me on the bed on all fours. And then just through the all fours position, Nina, my daughter, she just flew out, you know, like literally like a cork out of the champagne. And she's just kind of landed there on the bed and basically done a couple of screams. Her dad lifted her, then she's come to me and it was quite amazing because she just went straight on my breast and started sucking, you know, like she knew to do it straight away. The dogs came over, they licked her, you know, the dogs